Joining us now in the studio is public affairs analyst Dr. Law Mefor, who is super excited. The fact that he was able to cast his ballot and even came in waving his thumb and showing yeah, us that he. Yes, thank you. Thank you for joining us, uh, Dr. Mefor. Thank um, you for hosting me. All right, so aside from casting your ballot, you did have an opportunity to observe, you know, the process here in the nation's capital. Talk yeah. to us about your observations, especially where INEC, ne INEC needs to, you know, get a thumbs up and where. We can give them a knock for a better tomorrow. Yeah, I, I think um, on the whole, federal capital territory was fairly okay in uh, all uh, departments of the game. If I must uh, use that word, game. And um, I think INEC was largely on top of the game. But there are a few areas that, uh, you know, made me really wonder what uh, happened uh, to the last uh, four years? You know, late report of uh, INEC officials, you know, at uh, their duty posts. It's supposed to be 8.30 in the morning, but uh, on the average, that didn't happen until about uh, maybe 10 a.m. in the morning. I think INEC should have been able to solve that problem. Even though they could have a ready excuse that uh, we have problem of Naira crisis, logistic uh, problems. Can we use the Naira crisis as an issue? Because a couple of days ago, even just yesterday, the INEC chairman can be quoted to have said, you know, the part where we need cash, you know, the CBN yeah. did provide all we need. Yes, uh, uh, and yes. Can uh, we use the, that the, as an the, excuse? The, the chairman of INEC admitted that, they, that uh, CBN had already taken care of their logistic problems. That is why I'm worried that they weren't able to live up to expectations where it comes to taking care of reporting on time. And you see, this has implications because you say voting will have to commence 8.30 and end at 2.30. And um, who is not you know, in the queue online before 2.30 is out of it. That has implications. Because somebody would, somebody would report early enough in the morning and I neck is not there. You say, let me get home and come back. The time lost cannot be lost on that individual. It should be lost on I neck. So I think that the law ought to be when I neck reports, there should be a window of four hours, six hours, and that should be it for me. And that, that is not the case now. And I think that um, I, I neck didn't uh, do well in that aspect. And it's not just FCT what I gathered across the country is the general trend. It means that this same problem of late reporting to the duty post across the country has been the case. And um, generally also, like I said, I think um, every other thing discounted. FCT was largely peaceful and um, uh, I, I voted down. Yeah. How much, you sorry, uh, Dr. Mefo, how much does this impact, you know, the psyche of the people? No, uh, this does. kind it of uh, tendentious, I'll use that word, electoral process, you know, where you know, the people for, find for me, it. For me, as a psychologist, you know, in my opening glee, I said that you report 880 as they determined and you can't see the process on you go home, you come back, it's demoralizing, it's depressing. A lot of people won't come back. And they, even when they do, they may come very late. And when they come late and they can't get into the line and get accredited and then vote, there is a problem. It means that if this number is quite extensive, it's going to account for a significant number of people who were disenfranchised by INEC tardiness, INEC not being able to live up to its own expectations. Because they set these standards for themselves. Nigerians didn't do so. INEC promised Nigerians that they are this time ready to do something different. Give us free, fair, credible, acceptable election and its outcomes that will meet irreducible minimums. World global standards 
That's all. Of, that's what all of us expected. Absolutely, and, um, and of course, let's look at the fact that you know uh, one word that keeps uh, uh, sticking out for every time you speak to a lot of the observers all across the country is the sheer determination, especially on the part of the Nigerian youths. So that brings me to my next question to you, as a psychologist. At the end of the day, the determination is there, but of course, we've seen the lapses on the part of INEC. Are you worried that some of this lapses on the part of INEC? like you have highlighted and even other observers have as well do you think it will have a likely implication on the number of people who eventually cast your ballots let's not forget the youths make up almost 40 percent of the almost 87 million collected pvcs that we have in nigeria yeah i i think uh, the the youths are determined this time i saw a lot of them where i voted here in abuja area one um area one primary school over 5,000 of us there, under the sun, you know, much later rain, people were determined. They stood, you know, through the thick and thin, determined to cast their vote and have a count. But that is not to say that they are happy with the, the treatment they received. I think Nigerians deserve a lot more. And um, for me also, I think uh, the Nigerian youths, should be applauded you know this time around you know why in uh, the uh, election cycles in this uh, dispensation since 1999 nigerian youths have not quite been forthcoming you see so many of them play football on election day watching uh, nollywood and all that but this time they they they, they were quite eminent eminently available ready to cast their vote and they went through a lot. I saw it. There was shine, there was rain, and they went through all. Okay. So uh, kudos to them. Absolutely, you know, yes. Uh, kudos uh, to the Nigerian I think, I, I think it's good. Yeah, they, they want to take back their country, and uh, that is really very possible. But uh, let me ask you, um, with your experience, though limited to the federal capital territory, yeah. is the uh, process improving from your perspective? I, I think the process is improving. And um, I say so advisedly, if you check what happened in uh, the last uh, presidential election, 2019, compared to this time around, I think it's a marked improvement. Because, you know, going by the place I voted and uh, the information I gathered from across the country, I think many more people are eager to be part of the process. And this is very significant. Because uh, when you have more people join the process, what that means is that many more people would determine who would become the leader, obviously, at any level. That in itself is a marked improvement. And uh, I think uh, in the final analysis, even though they are not part of what you may call the primaries that yielded the people that are now bearing oh. the flags of the political parties, right. you know, they are deciding. Um, it'll be, amongst the people presented to them who they believe is the best option. And I believe that at the end of the day, at least 50%, they would be able to say this is what it should be between now and the next four years at presidential, senatorial, and the House okay. of Representatives. Dr. Lome, for, let me come back to um, you know a question we actually posed across to something a little earlier with regards to voter turnout. Um, Despite the fact that the last election we had about over 80 million registered voters, if you look at the number of those who eventually cast your ballot, it was quite abysmal. Are you optimistic that this time around, now we have about 93 million registered voters, about 87 million of them <laughs> did collect their PVCs. Yeah. Are you optimistic that we might get beyond that 35% yeah, vote be cast like we I'll, saw I'll in 2019? I'll be surprised if we don't hit 40 to 45% this time. I will really be surprised. Or even more. Yeah, it should if be up to, more, I believe it should be up to 40, it be 45 about percent. 60, 70 percent. Yes, the kind and, of and, and that will be, you know. and that will be an increment in a build up, an increment of uh, what you may call uh, 20 to 30 percent. And I believe that is commendable enough. It shouldn't be too radical. And uh, of course, if you look at it, the number of uh, new registrants we added to the pool, just about 10 million. Uh, what that means is that you added uh, about um, 
uh, you know, 10 to 20 percent new registrants. But there is a new orientation. You have to. That's look what at I'm it. saying. Even look those who no, had the TV no, no, were no, never no. bothered yes. to. That's the point I wanted to bring in into the into the mix. That even though the uh, average has always been 35 to 37 percent, apathy has been the rule all the while. Absolutely. Now, there is a remarkable improvement. People are prepared to vote this time around. An and improvement I saw that began and with I'll the Texas revolution, I'll, I'll you know, is now being no, translated apart from, apart from into NSAS, the ballot uh, boxes. Apart from insights, mm. my hero for this election is President Muhammad Buhari. Do you yeah. know why? He, is in, he insisted on free, fair, credible, acceptable, election. And this data I mean, is pushing it through. And that inspired the confidence you're seeing now. People believe that their vote can count this time around. And that is all we need. And we saw it under Jonathan. We are seeing a repeat of that history under Buhari. I give it to him. He, he, should, to, he should be uh, commended, to, really. Let, let me also extend my heroic uh, performance to INEC. But they must go the whole hog. Uh -huh. INEC has to do a lot more Okay. To be able to earn my respect and the IG of police and his uh -huh. name. I like the fact that you've let touched them, on. Yes. I like the fact that you touched on the yeah. IG uh, of let police. Them get Dr. Mefo, wait. Dr. Yes, Mefo, you're, you're at the end of the day. Really? You know. Before no, 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 we start no, 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 praising them. Let, let, let them know we need more. Absolutely. They, uh, um, prior to these elections, the IGP of police had announced over 400,000 police officers deployed all across the country Correct. to ensure that, you know, we have a smooth process. And there was a promise of at least two police officers to per a polling unit. unit. Some of the videos we saw online, especially coming out of Lagos, must be troubling to someone like you, for instance. And one wonders, um, where's the gap? the gap? We have the officers deployed out there, but yet... We saw what happened with the burning of even polling materials and people even chased away from even casting you know, their ballots. And, you the, know, police, and like, the police changing into mufti to run away. Like, like, you see, you, you don't blame such a policeman who changed into mufti I, to run away from, from a mob that could really have them killed. You see, Nigerian policing system is faulty, Abinasia, fundamentally. I have always faulted it, even on this platform that you cannot have 400,000 policemen and women police 210 million Nigerians. It's impossible. You know, centralized policing system is the bane of what we are following through now. You see, Baba Al-Khali, the IG of police, is here in Abuja. And you are talking about 36 states, 774 local governments, 800 and 800 8,812 words and 176,000 polling units. You want the IG of police to sit down in Abuja and police all of them? It is not possible. He has, uh, he now, has officers and men I know. to do that. Now, now, the officers, the, listen, now, now, excuse me, please. Can, I, can, I, can I drop this then you come in? I get where you are coming from. I'm not making excuses for the police. I don't speak But for that's them. what you're doing. Wait a minute. You know? No, it's wait wait a minute. I'll tell you where the problem is. The system that is unworkable cannot work because of one off election. What happens is that don't forget, you have 36 governors that enjoy immunity. And the CPs, the police commissioners, seemingly are under them. So what do you expect? That is where the problem is coming from. What uh, we thank saw, you. Thank you. Second, sorry, sorry, Mefo, we saw we in have, Lagos. Sorry, Dr. Mefo, sorry. We're going to end the show now because okay. we don't have all the time. You know, um, there'll be more the analysis, more discussions. It's definitely continuing. Our yeah. studios is still open another Dr. 24 Mefo, hours. Mefo, Public Affairs thank you. Thank you so much for the having The pleasure is mine always.